What is up, people? Welcome back. In this lesson, we witnessed the wedding of aggregate demand and aggregate supply. So put on your bridesmaid dress and let's do this thing. Be sure to smash that like button for the bride and groom. All right, dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to witness the joining together of the aggregate demand curve, which represents total spending in an economy, be it consumer, investment, government, or net exports, and the short-run aggregate supply curve, which represents total production in an economy, into holy equilibrium, or at least short-run equilibrium. Okay, enough of that, but yeah, that's basically the first idea. The ADAS model is the most important model in AP Macro, and you're going to be drawing this one a lot. There are basically three starting points for any question on this model, so I'm going to walk you through each of those three starting points in the rest of this video. But remember, I don't just want you to memorize what the model looks like, I want you to understand how it works and how it can explain various states of the economy. Okay, so we established that short-run equilibrium occurs at the intersection of the AD and SRAS curves. But those future Nobel Prize winning economists among you may be sitting at home like, okay, but what about that third curve, the all-important LRAS curve? You might see this coming, but long-run equilibrium occurs at the intersection of the AD, SRAS, and LRAS curves. On the horizontal axis, we label the LRAS YP for potential output or YF for full employment output. Since this is the full employment level of output, we can also say that at this level of output, we are at the natural rate of unemployment, so there's no cyclical unemployment. There are two other places on the ADAS model where we can have short-run equilibrium, and let's take a look. There can be short-run equilibrium to the right of the LRAS, where actual output is greater than potential output. This creates a positive output gap, which is basically just a way to say that actual output is greater than potential output. This is also known as an inflationary gap. Since actual output is greater than potential output, it means that unemployment is below the natural rate of unemployment. And there's always the question, well, how is it possible for an economy to produce beyond potential output? And that's a good question that we've already kind of answered in the last couple of videos, but let's bring it home now. Remember that this is a short run equilibrium. So that means that wages and input prices are fixed or that they don't change. So when the price level rises, businesses want to increase their output in response to the higher prices their products are selling for. And they're able to increase their output in the short run because input prices and wages are fixed in the short run. This way output can be greater than potential output, but only temporarily, only in the short run. In video 3.7, we'll get into the specific way the economy transitions from the short to the long run. And there can also be short run equilibrium to the left of the LRAS curve. And this is known as a negative output gap, where actual output is less than potential output. This is also known as a recessionary gap. And importantly, since output is less than potential output, it means that unemployment is above the natural rate of unemployment. So there is cyclical unemployment because the economy is experiencing a recession. So if you remember from unit two, we talked about business cycles. That's what we're talking about here. So take a look on the screen now and we can see GDP over the last few decades. And if you notice those gray bars, they represent periods of recession. And you can see that GDP is falling during those points, can't you? And then you see those points between the grays where there's no bar and you see that typically GDP is rising. Those are expansions. So this represents the same information that we're modeling with our ADAS model. And we could also look at a graph of the unemployment rates and we see the same thing. The gray bars represent recessions. And as you notice, unemployment rises during recessions and then it falls during the expansions. Exactly what we'd expect. And really that's it for this lesson. I definitely suggest that you practice drawing this model in each of the starting points that we discussed today. Long run equilibrium, inflationary gap, and recessionary gaps. Stick around, I have practice coming up in just a moment. In the next three videos, we'll talk about what happens next. So make sure you feel really comfortable with our starting points, okay? Until next time, this has been a La Money Production. And thanks again for watching. Please hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Ring the bell for notifications. Make sure to check out the description to get links to the answers to these practice questions, as well as the great study aids I've made for you. And I will see you in the next video.